In today's video, we're going to be discussing the primary advantages and disadvantages of flying your DJI O3 air unit with the Goggles 2 versus the new Goggles 3 from DJI. Before we go any further, just to clarify, I'm not going to be flying with the DJI controller simply because this is the controller that I fly FPV with. First, we'll start with the goggles too, because that's the one that I have binded already, so might as well start with that. It is a dig digital image, so what can I say? It's clean and clear. And green, everything is green because I'm surrounded by green. But I will say close proximity flying with this around trees and stuff, very, very comfortable. We'll take a look at the settings in a bit just so you can see what settings I'm running on the goggles. But both settings will be identical. But just so you know, yeah, diving, falling between trees and stuff, flying around trees in close proximity. Very, very, very comfortable doing this. No problem. This goggles just seems like the way the way the field of view is set up, it's almost like it, it's daring you to fly close up to stuff. Now the drone's behind me. I do have a spotter, of course, spotting me. So don't do this unless you have a spotter. But yeah, my wife is spotting me. And oh, I'm getting break up. I got a little bit of break up there. A little bit of break up there. Oh, breaking up, breaking up, breaking up. Can I make it and wrap around this pole? Oh, I'm getting a breakup signal. Break up. There you go. I can wrap around this pole. That's as far as I want to go. And then come back. But the signal's breaking up here. Let's try to do a little power loop and see. Yeah, I could still do stuff even though I'm far away. Starting to break up as you can see on the screen over there. Let's head back. I've got channel mode manual. The frequency is locked in 5.8. It's 40 megahertz. It's set to, and I'm on channel one. So that's, that's why I'm getting good results. Let's go into the camera settings, 16 by nine, 4K 60, ultra wide. I've got rock steady on, advanced camera settings. Do I have anything crazy going on in here? No colors are normal. Sharpness is minus one. And this image, to be honest, does look a little bit over sharpened in my opinion even a little bit of power loops and stuff nice and comfortable accurate no complaints so if i go into the settings and i go into display you can see that i'm at a hundred percent hundred percent if i go to 90 percent look at that that's not bad i could still see the whole image there's a tiny black ring around it i'll put it at 90 percent if i want to do like some what should I say, like some cinematic flying and stuff? I think 90% is great for that. It's not up in your face. And I love the flexibility that this uh, goggles provides in that respect. Dynamic range is not bad. In the dark areas, I can see the dark areas pretty clear. So not no complaints there at all. All right, let's bring it back and try the new goggles and see how it compares. When you're switching between the goggles, I have the new goggles three on now. You've got to rebind. So all that means you got to hit the little bind button on the O3 air unit there and then just hit the bind button on the goggles, which is the power button. You just hold it down for five seconds. I've got the goggles three on and ready to fly. And I must say this image is a little bit cleaner, like a lot cleaner, a lot less over sharpened. All right, let's take off. Nice. Do the same thing here. Nice. The image just looks a lot realer. It's not that green, green, green. It still is green, but you know, I'll put them side by side so you can see the difference in the green. Nice. Very powerful. I will say that this image is a lot cleaner. And not only that, the goggles, it just doesn't put the pressure on your face because of, of this uh, padding right here. That's where the pressure is. It's not around the area where your goggles are on. So that's a lot more comfortable. And then the goggles is not pressing against your face as a result. And this little rubber uh, seal that's around here just really seals the light out. So it's just a lot more work and a lot more effort went into the uh, designing the light seal. However, I will say this field of view, 
is kind of different than what I'm used to. Come back here. Oh, starting to see a little bit of breakup. A little bit of breakup. Can I go around this? Yep. Actually, the range is better. Look at that. Sitting the same way. Oh, 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 there goes the orange line. So I would say the range is pretty much the same thing. The field of view definitely looks a lot more round. So it will take some getting used to. If you're coming from the goggles too, at least that's what I'm feeling. Nice. 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 The precision is pretty good. So different fields of view somewhat. This one at 100% zoom fills the screen. This one at 100% punches in and at 90% pretty much fills the screen or just short of filling the screen. So a little bit more flexibility from this. This definitely has more dynamic range and better image quality in the goggles. I don't mean the O3 unit. The O3 unit is the O3 unit. So it doesn't matter which goggles you fly with, you will get the same image quality that is stored on the SD card in the O3 air unit. So we're not talking about that, we're talking about while you're flying what you're seeing. This definitely has more dynamic range, definitely more color accurate. Uh, the older goggles are a little more punchy and oversaturated and a little over sharpened looking. This one definitely has more, I would say, of kind of a real life look to it. Comfort, once you mod these goggles, you will get the comfort pretty much that you're looking for. Although this goggles will always press on your face. This one will not. This part will press on your forehead and then you adjust the goggles on your face. This one has the extra cameras that will allow you to see outside if you toggle between it from tapping the side of the goggles. I would say this one has a little better transmission, a little better, not much worth talking about. Both of them basically broke up at the same distance as you saw the screen. The box came up on the screen. This one just took a little bit longer to start breaking breaking up. It is uh, newer technology. If you like the ability to remove a battery and put a new battery in, this definitely has more flexibility in that respect. Sometimes FPV freestyle pilots like to fly with their FPV batteries that they fly their drones with these. They like to fly them and you could take this same battery and use it to power these goggles. Whereas here you're kind of locked in because there's no plug like this one to pull the battery out and put your own plug and your own battery in it just doesn't exist on the new one. You get what you get with this. You could always plug a cable in the side on the USB-C and keep it active, but then you'll have a wire hanging at the side and yeah. So there's pros and cons to both. This new uh, Goggles 3 here will work with your DJI Mini 4 Pro, which is the new mini drone that's out there. So if you're like me and you enjoy cinematic flying too, this will work with it. This will work with it too, but only with the motion controller. This will work with drones like the Mini with the motion controller and with just your standard remote as well. You don't need to hook up to the remote to the motion controller. And this is great because the other day I was flying, uh, trying to film a castle out in the middle of nowhere. The sun was beating down. There was no real shade for me if I wanted to keep the angle to get the best signal possible. And I just couldn't see this castle was old. It's falling apart. The whole castle blew up on the inside back in the days and it was falling apart. They propped it up. And as you can see, there's wires sticking out of the castle over there. I couldn't see those things on my controller and something told me come back, put the goggles on and go back and fly it with the Mini 4 Pro. And that's what you're looking at now. And that's how I was able to fly so close comfortably because once you go into a pair of goggles and you're flying cinematic number one you don't have to worry about likely you're like in your own world in those goggles and you can see every single detail whereas looking at your controller screen which can be very small it's very difficult to pull off what i would say tactical maneuvers so bear that in mind if you plan to go out and buy other tech that DJI makes. And that includes the O4. This is the O3 unit. When DJI obviously comes out with the O4 air unit, you don't have to worry about compatibility because you will always already have a goggles that puts out O4. So they will match automatically. Whereas this older goggles might not be compatible because it's O3 and it might not be compatible with the O4 air unit whenever that comes out. So if future proofing is something that you care about, then yeah, you definitely want to go with this. And you might say, look, I'll stick with this and the O3. That's more than good enough for me, 100%. This is a digital feed and it's quite good as well. Just not as good as this, but really it's good enough. 
I get that. There's still people out there flying analog, so believe me, I get it. Now, I know a lot of people were having problems with this goggles and the O3 dropping out and stuff like that. I've had problems before I did the most recent update on September 9th. That's when I updated everything, the O3. I updated my goggles again because they came out with a update for the new Neo and in there was also some bug fixes so I updated everything I master reset the goggles and I went back in and set up all my settings again just to make sure that everything was crystal clear and I have not had any problems with this since prior to it was breaking up a lot I felt like it was skipping and missing but I think whatever the problem was DJI fixed it so I'm happy to report that as well. So here I am weeks later with the Goggles 3, just kind of giving it a full opportunity because it's the new Goggles for me. And I'm so used to using the Goggles 2, the field of view, everything that I figured, maybe that's the reason why I don't really like this goggle so much. But after flying it for a couple of days now, I feel like I've gotten used to the to the different field of view, the kind of a more curved effect. It really doesn't bother me that much. Um, anymore. I feel like when you're flying FPV, a lot of it is muscle memory and a lot of visual memory too of the way you see things. And it's not that this field of view is bad. It's just that it took some while for me to get used to it. And then there's the other features too. Like there's a defog feature. If you keep your, your goggles on like this and you're sweating a lot, the lens inside the goggles can get fogged up. There's a button you can press on this to just defog it real quick. It works really good. I don't know why they didn't put it in the goggles too. Both both goggles have fans, but hey, I guess that's a DJI thing. And then the other feature is being able to wirelessly stream to a smartphone if I have the DJI Fly app. So I found that to be really convenient as well. The prices are really similar too. They're only like $50 difference. And the other thing you have to take into consideration is if you do buy the goggles too, the older one, see there's a thick padding there. The goggles doesn't come like that. And then it doesn't come with the battery attached to the back like this. And it comes with a really long cable. If you want your battery attached to your head strap, you will have to buy a shorter cable. If you've never had any one of these goggles before, then I don't think the field of view will be a problem at all. But if you're coming from your goggles too, just be aware when you switch over to the goggles three and you try doing the same maneuvers that you normally do with this you might you might crash a few times because well you're just not used to the field of view right but once you're used to it i can assure you everything is fine you guys let me know in the comment section what you think one last thing if you do shoot in the cinema like with your fpv drones or your hybrid drones or your cinematic drones head over to www.dronexfactor.com i've got a bunch of luts there slap one of those luts on i'm sure you will get a desired look that you like with that being said i hope this video was helpful i've got to go before these little flies eat me alive and to make sure you do all the youtube fun stuff give this video a huge thumbs up give it a like give me a sub make sure you hit the bell so you get notified when i make more videos like this with that being said i will catch you guys well whenever i can Lying high in NYC skies. Drone wings catch the city's cries. Xavier with chips in hand.